bonhomme. Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retentisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> C'est encore beau. Tout ce qui est vieilli est bien meilleur. <rire> C'est vrai, le jeune, que tu te promènes quasiment en bobette. Une bonne police, ça te ferait pas de tort. Mais je vois te dire une chose. Dans ton coin de pays comme paris on n'a rien sans rien. Et où, mon caribou? Vois-tu le livre, là? C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Et... Tu marches, tu marches, tu marches, tu sens des pieds. <rire> Vois que tu n'as pas mieux à faire. Oye, 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 y'a un petit gars d'écarté dans ma maison. Gomme moi la belle rose de la tulipe, qui se donne au yard sur le mercredi des cendres. Tu te vois effrayant, cette histoire, là. Gadon, ça ouvre la pantie. Prends là, je m'en fous. Perds ton temps dans mes déchets tant que tu rapportes du caribou. <rire> An axe, not too shabby. Carl felt he needed to protect himself. There, Carl had fed his mind, but had forgotten the harsh reality that his body also needed nourishment, especially in the dead of winter. The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, 
and boiled cauliflower filled the air. At Jean Bluin, seems like that pig had a name after all. Rock music invaded the minds of men even in the remotest of places. The man didn't own a turntable though, so there's that going for him. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. The rag reeked of fermented vomit. Carl wondered how one could bear to live in such gross and horrid conditions. Carl knew right away that the owner of this place wasn't a copper collector. No? This was a junk man's base of operations. The guy definitely seemed like quite the expert in scavenging scrap metal, with or without permission, surely. In the right hands, red metal could sell like hotcakes. Carl had at any point wished to get his hands on some caribou. He couldn't have wished for better than a distillery like this one.
Sometimes, and especially around here, people are so possessive with their land as a dog is with hydrants. Another worrisome victim of this ice. This one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort to hide it. But Carl didn't know how to reach it. The week of October 5th, thought Carl. That was this week. The plug should have been here by now. The shape of this machine, almost straight out of Star Trek, was out of the ordinary to say the least. It felt like this thing could fly up into space at any moment. It was an indisputable fact that machines like this entailed a level of intellectual finesse that Carl was lacking. This truck's not going anywhere. Where were the amputated parts? Carl grinned as he pictured a Frankenstein-esque car lying around somewhere made of parts from a dozen different vehicles. What good was a motorless car? The mechanic sure had an odd way to go about repairing things.
Carl hadn't lived up to his good finder reputation. He still hadn't found any of the wealth contained in Lamotte's lands. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Phone services weren't provided in this area. The milk was sorted by color, from the whitest to the greenest, or in other words, from the freshest to the sourest. Roswell, Atamipec, same story. Large deserts conducive to extravagant follies. Carl deducted this was a map of the area. Were those pins pointing to places of interest? Weird stuff. Kind of a crossing between a colander and a hairdryer. What was it for? To play telepath? To protect against nuclear waves? These scribblings were undoubtedly the mark of a tormented mind. Something wasn't right in the poor mechanic's head. led to believe that the snowmobile's parts had to be scattered about in the vicinity.
a bit of gas, and a new spark plug, and the key. And this thing would run perfectly. All he needed to do now was to find all that. never thought he would be dancing with the wolves. The blood and the shape of the hole in the ground left no room for doubt. Someone had been buried here. Someone whose life had been taken with blunt force. Where was the body now? Why had it been buried, only to be dug up later? Carl felt as though he was shrouded in fog. antenna in the middle of the path. Undoubtedly ideal in attempting to communicate with little green men, was quite awkwardly placed. There had to be a lever to control it, maybe behind it. Carl would have to figure out how to reach it. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. appeared to be linked together, but for what purpose? Oh, 
Northern Sesame. So that's where the generator key was hiding. All that was left was to use it. At last, so big an effort for an oh-so-tiny piece of metal. many of his contemporaries felt like he had more trouble breathing when he wasn't smoking. Cigarette was his own personal breathing assistant. Turned into pain. Carl needed to find someplace warm. <laughs> 